The Olden World Written by Tsar Yoshi Chapter 216 Meeting 2 Hmm... Shinespark bowed her head. So you have no idea where Valet is, other than that she's not following you. Sort of, Maple corrected. She could have gone back to the defense force, but only if Ha was telling the truth. And I'm not sure if I trust him. How? The Pegasus? Gerardo interrupted, blinking. He actually succeeded in tracking you down? Maple sighed, glancing up at Gerardo. You did send him, then. Thanks, I guess. He never really did anything useful, though. Well, at least he did that much, Gerardo remarked, smoothing his head crest. The map of Iron Ridge shimmered in the background, still cycling between normal and a flood simulation. I must say, I found him rather annoying, though I did consider the possibility he was sincere towards the end. It wasn't impossible that he was, in fact, trying to make it up to me. He did explain that, Maple offered, putting a hoof on the table. He said there was something in the crates that he wanted, and he was initially trying to sabotage us to get the guards to open them, but he must have failed and gotten them confiscated instead. Gerardo's eyes widened. You don't say, he mused, running a talon down his neck. You see, Selma told me they were already expecting the crates, and he confiscated them deliberately to stop them from being properly delivered and falling into the hooves of the yaks. But if Howe professed to having something to do with that... Hold on, Scheinberg interrupted. There's something important here. Everyone looked at her, falling silent. These crates, she said, leaning forward. You delivered them two days ago, and the defense force had no way of knowing they were coming, right? Gerardo nodded. Not unless Aaron Bai said as much in his letters, which were then intercepted by a defense force spy. Unlikely, Shunpa continued. Up until now, things have been recently stable in Iron Ridge. A few months ago, one of Iron Ridge's primary trading partners became embroiled in a war which dipped the balance of power of the Economic Council enough in Yakakistan's favor that there aren't any big contention points to generate drama. Nothing was happening, basically. She thumped the table. Now, all of a sudden, there's this. It could be a coincidence, but I think it's much more likely it was caused by something. And the biggest recent change around here has been you guys. Us, Gerardo said, pointing to himself, Starlight and Maple. Yeah, you. Shunspark nodded. Maybe it's because they know, somehow, that this means a big break for us. But it also could be because of these crates. Gerardo filled me in on what happened, but here's an overview for everyone who hadn't heard. He got contracted by Akiakistan to deliver two unmarked, unopened crates to Iron Ridge without using air travel. It took him about a year to complete, but when he reached the Defense Force Fort, and the crates were going to a warehouse in the Water District, he was effectively robbed by Selma. And we were full napped, Maple Crossley added, laying a hoof on Starley's shoulders. All this is very interesting, Ganga remarked. If I'm following, we have a sudden delivery that appears to invoke drama within the Defense Force, coinciding with a bomb threat that may very well be factions of the Defense Force trying to frame each other. So you're saying one side of the Force wants the crates and the other side doesn't want them to have them, and one side is trying to get us to invade so he can blame it on the other to get him out of the picture? That is what I'm saying. Gung about. Since Selma appears responsible for the bombs and also pilfered these crates, he is clearly a faction, and all these actions seem in character for him. According to Defense Force politics, that would mean the other side is Commander Valet. Admiral, Maple whispered out of the side of her mouth. Shinespark interrupted, tapping the table again. Hey, hold up, she announced. I'm interested in knowing more about how and the role he played in this. Pretend he was their intended recipient, knew they were going to get stolen, and was trying to counter-steal them. What would that imply? That wouldn't make sense. Maple shook her head. We stole something important from one of the crates while me and Starlight were escaping from the Defense Force fort. When Howe found us, he said he had seen it on a security camera and wanted what we stole very badly. He offered to help us if I would give it to him. I haven't done that yet. Instantly, Shinespark's hoof was pointing to Maple. When did Valet start helping you, she pressed, insistent. This could be important. Was it before or after you opened the crates? Maple swallowed. She was always following us, but very shortly after. 
Well, there you have it, it seems, Ganga sighed. If Selma's goal was to keep the crates away from their intended recipient, and that recipient was Valet, and if she were to discover that you stole and possessed the most important thing in them, it would be only logical that she would follow and protect you until such time as she could recover the stolen object. But she... Maple swallowed. She definitely cared about us, she protested weakly. Even if she loved to deny it, she couldn't have been in that for a mission alone. An important detail, if I may. Gerardo raised a talon. During a confidential talk with Selma, he professed that the true recipient of the crates he was intending to thwart was, in fact, Ambassador Herman. Never trust a yak, Gigabolt remarked brightly, causing Maple to flinch. Well, Maple fumbled for words. Valet hates Herman, doesn't she? She spent forever telling me about how bad he was. Ganga shrugged. There could always be free sides in play. Or perhaps she was playing you? She is the most infamous trickster in Iron Ridge, after all. I, Shinespark said slowly, am curious what was in the crates. They were opened, weren't they? At the very least, knowing what was inside could give us insight on what the side that wants the crates is planning. Maple? Maple swallowed, glancing around the room nervously. A forest of eyes stared back at her, unblinking. And she managed. There was a lot of black glass. We didn't recognize it. But from what we know now, it sounds like moon glass. What we took was a crystal orb, how said it was a windigo heart. Gerardo's eyes widened and Shinespark sucked in a breath. Gunga scoffed, Gigabolt said nothing, and Granada remained as stunned and ashen as she had been for the entire conversation. A windigo heart? Gunga slapped the table, nearly laughing. Everyone knows those aren't real. No, Shinespark whispered. They're very much real. And that isn't good at all. For a few seconds, the room blinked. Say what? Ganga leaned forward, brows furrowed. Lady Shinespark, what don't we know? This is technically information above your classification level, Shinespark said somber. But I'll tell you anyway, because we need to make the right decision here about what to do. Windigos do exist. Their hearts are extremely rare, and we've seen exactly one in Sosa before. It was used for the procedure to remove and seal away my brand. Gunga's ears folded. Oh my. Then, Maple sagged. So how was telling the truth? Please tell me I'm interpreting this incorrectly, Gerardo demanded. But do you mean to say a Kyakistan was importing an object usable to systematically remove brands, as well as a large quantity of the contraband material used for storing them? Because that would be most alarming. It's incorrect, Shinespark sighed, but only partly. The procedure we used seven years ago destroyed the Windigo heart in the process. However, that was less than a year after Obsidian first appeared, and it's been seven times that long now. There's someone I'll need to speak to first, but we have no idea what the Akakistan's research facilities have done during that time, or what they're capable of. Lady Shinespark, if this is true, then this is all extremely sinister, Gunga insisted. The Wendigos were the mythical incarnation of hatred sung of in Yakakistani lore. If this is involved with the recipient of these crates and the possibility of stealing brands, it appears it is, Gerardo continued for him. Alas, everyone, are you thinking along the same course of action that I am? Shinespark nodded. If the defense force is fractured into sides, and we know one is working with this much destructive potential, and the other has openly invited us to cooperate with them, Gerardo nodded. Then it follows we should do as Selma wishes and assault the fortress. Ganga nodded as well. The enemy of our enemy, as it would be. Additionally, I feel it may be wise to mention that if Selma said these bombs, cooperating with them could be the best way to avoid seeing them go off. When a pony holds a sword to your throat, after all, the best thing to do is exactly what they say. Then it's settled. Gigabolt perked up. As the best equipped to deal with energy weapons, I volunteer to lead the charge. No. Shinespark brought her hoof down. It sounds like we need to invade, but that's not the only thing we have to decide. There's also the question of whether to take preemptive action and evacuate. If we did, we'd clear the factories and sandbag the towns at the very least. 
What did Selma say on the matter? Gaga asked. If we're going to follow his instructions precisely, it would be best to defer to him here as well. Truthfully, I can't remember, Gerardo admitted. Evacuating does seem like an easy choice, given how much easier it is to prevent deaths than to cure them. What kinds of drawbacks would be involved? To evacuating? Shinespark shook her head. Many. Financially, it wouldn't be a concern. But first and foremost, it would cause ponies to panic, no matter what happened in the end. Narlbo is a quiet town whose residents are more involved with Karma Industries and Sosa, and if we convinced them to move for a false alarm, they'd see it as an inconvenience, getting drawn into Sosan politics. We don't need any rifts with the Earth District. The Stone District already distrusts us enough. Copswood, meanwhile, is a town with a large number of Sosans. A large number. It's where about 70% of our workers live, and their families. If we tried moving them, rumors and panic would spread faster even than flood water. In fact, it's entirely possible and likely Selma's planned factors in the massive destabilization such an operation would cause. The moment this flood becomes anything more than a closely guarded secret, everything will be chaos. Gunga nodded. We would also need to carry word to Riverfall, so they might safeguard the riverbanks as well. The town is built right up to the river's edges, and it would likely overflow for several days trying to drain away the flood water. The second problem, Scheinsberg continued, is that leaving Sosa empty could be the perfect opportunity for thieves to strike. Remember that Sosa has very few pegasi, while the defense force is comprised entirely of them. We wouldn't be able to safely leave anyone here who could get clear if there was a flood, and the defense force could easily come in and out while we were gone. I don't know what their target would be, especially since this airship is far from the main factories, but it would be very easy. Of note, Gerardo cut in, of note, Gerardo cut in, it is Selma who wants us to react to this threat, and also Selma who declares that the defense force must be comprised of Pegasi. How hard would it be to convince the other chiefs to move out? Gigabolt asked. We don't exactly own even one of the factories here. Easy, Shinespark nodded. That isn't an obstacle. Gerardo? Maple? Her eyes wandered. I'm not sure if you've been brought up to speed on the situation with Sosa's leadership, but there are three factories. One is led by my biological father, Mobius. He used to be very resistant to the idea of hereditary rule and disowned both me and my half-sister, Elise. But as he's aged and been ruined by political scandals, and as I've grown to have an impressive skill set and leadership ability, he's changed his mind. Mobius is obsessed with me to the point where he does anything I ask. I might as well be the chief of his factory. Fender's durable, and the last factory has no chief, but is currently overseen by an interim candidate called Nimwick. Everyone outranks him. As for durable, leave him to me. Maple didn't respond, sitting stunned just like Granada. The lake couldn't be working with the Yaks to do something to everyone's cutie mark starlight. Could she? She whispered, shaking her head. Not after how long we watched her and how much she helped us. There must be another way. Hey! Starlight seized everyone's attention, climbing onto the table and staring at Shinespark. Say more about how you cutie mark thing with the Winnego hard work, she demanded. Cutie mark? Gunga's mustache twitched. That what you call brands? Gigabolt grinned. Hey, that's adorable! It... Shinespark looked away. What do you need to know? Because something doesn't make sense, Starlight said, standing stiffly. You said it broke the heart to do it, but you also figured out how really fast, since you didn't get your mark immediately after the Moonglass appeared. How did you know it would work and get it first try? And where did you get the first heart from? That's classified, Shinespark said, though I did promise to let you know anything you needed. Can I tell you later when these three aren't... Gunga shot her a dirty look. Go, technically, Gigabolt remarked, nodding at Granada. Little Missy here seems a little out of things. Probably too much meat broth. Does the magic have anything to do with emotions, Starlight pressed, walking down the table closer to Shine Spark. Cutie marks are supposed to be made of a pony's hopes and dreams, right? And Wendigos are supposed to be made of anger and hatred? Those sound sort of related, right? Shinespark's jaw slackened, and her lips pursed. Where are you going with this? Starlight waved a hoof at the map. If they did blow up those bombs, it would wreck half of Iron Ridge. It wouldn't kill many ponies, especially if you evacuated, 
but it would take away where a bunch of ponies worked, ponies who are already sad about what they do since they lost their old jobs a long time ago. Slowly, worry settled over Shinespark's features. If they blew it up, Starlight continued, they'd be hurting all the ponies who are already hurt most. But when the airships came, or when Project Aslan died, they had no one to blame. This time, they would. They'd blame the defense force for making the bombs. But if you evacuate them, and then go up there, you'd be working with Selma, and you wouldn't want them to blame you. So who's working against him that everyone already hates? Maple paled. Starlight, no. Yeah, Starlight swallowed. Shinespark, you know how the magic works. If some pony had that much hatred focused at a single point, at themselves, what bad magical stuff could they do? Shinespark hit the back of her chair, eyes wide. Then they could be intending to blow it up no matter what we do. We have to evacuate. End of chapter 216